Great Lakes evolved over a billion years. Today, they're a vital link between the cities bordering the lakes and the sea. They provide over 20 million people with drinking water and irrigate crops throughout the Midwest. But in the past few years, fears have grown about the Great Lakes' future. Water levels are falling. People who have worked the lakes for years believe they can already see a change. We noticed a drastic decrease in water levels right after the September long weekend, where the water in a week dropped a foot, and throughout the, the remaining of the fall, it went down about another two feet. And you can notice that by the pinker or the brighter colored rock versus the rock that's typically exposed to the weather. And what we saw there was a clear example of how the water has dropped um, a good three to four feet. Many have been quick to blame global warming for the fall in lake levels. But geologists believe there is another force at work. The ice sheet that cut out the lakes was so heavy, it pushed down on the Earth's crust. Now the ice sheet has gone, the crust is bouncing back. Incredibly, 9,000 years since the end of the last ice age, the ground is still lifting. In the north, where the ice was thickest, land has risen by as much as 1,800 feet since the ice melted away. Toronto's famous CN Tower appears to be getting higher. As the crust bounces back, the land it's built on beside Lake Ontario rises nearly an inch each year. The CN Tower is part of the land mass here, so in fact it's rising out of the land. In fact, the whole land surface is rising slowly. Lake Nipissing today is a small body of water to the north of Lake Huron. 12,000 years ago, when the ice began to melt and Lake Nipissing first formed, it lay at sea level. Lake Nipissing, an enormous lake there again as the land rebound, so the lake eventually drained out and the land rose slowly, so the land is now 400, 450 feet above sea level. Geologists call this crustal rebound and it dramatically affects the delicate balance of the network of small rivers that feed the lakes. This is an interesting example. If we, if we think of trying to, ex trying to explain crustal rebound and we look at this river as it flows out into the lake at the moment, if we have crustal rebound, the land comes back up, this river in fact will cease flowing out into this lake. It's this crustal rebound that's partly responsible for the fall in level of the lakes. And as the lakes empty, their weight decreases, allowing the crust to bounce up even faster. Lake levels will fall, so the amount of water in the basin will in fact become less, and the effect of that will increase the rate of crustal rebound. The land will come up even faster than it's already doing and continues to do. As the crust rises, the lakes slowly empty. 